A very good evening and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I'm Sarb al -Fatih. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa will patronize tomorrow a celebration held by the Interior Ministry on the occasion of the 100th anniversary of the Bahrain Police, which will be held at the National Stadium. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received at Sakhir Palace today the credentials of the newly appointed ambassadors of Saudi Arabia, the Republic of Ireland, Tajikistan, Bosnia and Herzegovina and Switzerland. The Saudi ambassador, His Royal Highness Sultan bin Ahmed Al Saud, arrived at Sakhir Palace. He was received by the head of royal protocol and an official ceremony was held for the ambassador. Royal Highness Sultan bin Ahmed Al Saud then presented his credentials to His Majesty the King as the new ambassador of Saudi Arabia to Bahrain and welcoming speeches were exchanged between His Majesty the King and the ambassador. Later, the Irish ambassador John Gerard McCoy arrived at the palace. He was met by the head of royal protocol and an official ceremony was held for the ambassador. John Gerard McCoy then presented his credentials to His Majesty the King as the new ambassador of Ireland to Bahrain and welcoming speeches were exchanged between His Majesty the King and the ambassador. Later, the Tajikistani ambassador Bahudur Mahmoud Zoda Sharifi arrived at the palace. He was met by the head of royal protocol and an official ceremony was held for the ambassador. Bahudur Mahmoud Zoda Sharifi then presented his credentials to His Majesty the King as the new ambassador of Tajikistan to Bahrain and welcoming speeches were exchanged between His Majesty the King and the ambassador. Later, the Bosnian ambassador Sharif Mechkonovic arrived at the palace. He was met by the head of royal protocol and an official ceremony was held for the ambassador.
Sarif Muchkanovic then presented his credentials to His Majesty the King as the new ambassador of Bosnia and Herzegovina to Bahrain and welcoming speeches were exchanged between His Majesty the King and the ambassador. Later, the Swiss ambassador Massimo Baghi arrived at the palace. He was met by the head of royal protocol and an official ceremony was held for the ambassador. Massimo Baghi then presented his credentials to His Majesty the King as the new ambassador of Switzerland to Bahrain and welcoming speeches were exchanged between His Majesty the King and the ambassador. The ceremony was attended by His Highness His Majesty's personal representative, the Minister of Royal Court, the Minister of Foreign Affairs, follow-up Minister of the Royal Court and the Head of Royal Protocol. His Majesty the King praised the close relations linking Bahrain and their countries and the progress of these relations in many areas. The Ambassador, for their part, conveyed to His Majesty the King the greetings of their leaders and their wishes to His Majesty of good health and happiness and to Bahrain further progress and prosperity. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received at Sakhir Palace the UAE Ambassador to the Kingdom, Sheikh Sultan bin Hamdan bin Zayed Al Nahyan, on the occasion of UAE's 48th National Day. His Majesty praised the accomplishments of the UAE under the leadership of the President of the UAE, His Highness Sheikh Khalifa bin Zayed Al Nahyan, Deputy President, Prime Minister and Ruler of Dubai, Sheikh Mohammed bin Rajd Al Maktoum, and the Abu Dhabi Crown Prince and Deputy Supreme Commander of the UAE Armed Forces, his Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Dan Hayyan. His Majesty affirmed the strong bilateral relations, wishing the UAE and its people further progress and prosperity. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received today at Sakhir Palace the President of Bahrain Authority for Culture and Antiquities, Sheikh Hamay bin Muhammad Al Khalifa, where she briefed His Majesty on the preparations to participate in Expo 2020 Dubai, which is considered a high level event. His Majesty praised the efforts of the BACA and the people supervising the Bahraini Pavilion in promoting the heritage and culture of the Kingdom of Bahrain. He also praised the role of the BACA in preserving Bahraini heritage and putting 
pushing the cultural movement forward. He wished the authority success in its participation. Sheikh Hamey expressed thanks and appreciation to His Majesty the King for his directives and continuous support. She affirmed her keenness to apply these directives in the expo to reflect the status and the rich heritage of the Kingdom of Bahrain. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and Chairman of the Economic Development Board attended the fourth edition of the Bahrain Award for Entrepreneurship held under his patronage at Isa Cultural Center and organized by Bahrain's Labor Fund, Temkin. His Royal Highness highlighted Bahrain's outstanding success in advancing entrepreneurship across all sectors. He noted that the continual development of the domestic startup economy reflects the kingdom's efforts to nurture a business environment that fosters creativity stimulates innovation and contributes to sustainable economic growth in line with the objectives of the kingdom's comprehensive development led by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. His Royal Highness stressed that supporting entrepreneurship lies at the heart of the kingdom's strategies to further enhance economic performance and global competitiveness underpinned by the Bahrain Economic Vision of 2030's principles of sustainability, competitiveness and fairness. He noted that Bahrain's startup sector has emerged as a model for entrepreneurship internationally, pioneering innovative solutions and driving sustainable development. His Royal Highness then honored the eight winners chosen from among 21 participants, commending them for their contribution to economic diversification and innovation within the private sector. The Higher Evaluation Committee announced the winners as follows. Ahmed Abdel Hamid Al Awali, Doctori Online Services for Micro Enterprise of the Year Award. Abdullah bin Hindi Rashid Al Arifi and Ahmed Al Manai Shepherd Design Studio Co. for Startup of the Year Award. Nahl Al Mahmoud Lala Bella Events for SME of the Year Award. Nizar Sa'i Kalam Telecom Bahrain for Enterprise of the Year and with International Footprint Award. Mohammed Abdul Al All Food for Foodstuff for Sustainability in Business Award. Sheikh Latifa Mohammed Al Khalifa Clever Play for the Female Entrepreneur of the Year. The fourth edition of the Bahrain Award for Entrepreneurship also included two new categories. The Lifetime Achievement Award aimed at honoring pioneering personalities in the development of the national economy, which was granted to Farooq Al Mu'ayyad at the Global Enterprise of the Year, aimed at recognizing the role of international Bahraini enterprises that showcase Bahraini culture in their business activities, which was awarded to Raya Jafar Saleh for her enterprise Villa Mamas. Following the award ceremony, the chairman of Temkin, Sheikh Mohammed bin Isa Al Khalifa, thanked His Royal Highness the Crown Prince for the initiative in celebrating entrepreneurs and embracing innovative entrepreneurial projects in the kingdom, adding that the entrepreneurial sector is highly regarded by his leadership and this prestigious award is at the forefront of high-profile initiatives aimed at creating a fertile environment for entrepreneurs and institutions to enrich the kingdom's economic development. The chairman highlighted that Temkin is ready to further contribute to the development of the startup sector through numerous initiatives aimed at assisting entrepreneurs at every stage of their business journey, which stems from Temkin's vision to enhance the role of the private sector in the Kingdom of Bahrain. The fourth edition of the Bahrain Award for Entrepreneurship received a significant volume of applications which reflects the rapid growth of the startup sector in the kingdom. The organizing committee received over 180 applications, of which 35 qualified for the semi-finals and 21 for the final phase. The winners of the Bahrain Entrepreneurship Award each receive a cash reward and are offered multiple training and development opportunities overseen by international organizations such as the United Nations Industrial Development Development Organization, the UNIDO. Leadership, excellence and creativity are goals the Kingdom of Bahrain spared no efforts to achieve. The Bahrain Award for Entrepreneurship aims to highlight the success of Bahraini entrepreneurs and their outstanding performance. It also encourages creativity and supports the successful ideas and projects of the winners to promote entrepreneurship and innovation in all sectors by enabling them to contribute to the national economic development in line with the Economic Vision 2030 of the Kingdom of Bahrain. To achieve these goals, rules have been established to be applied by an arbitration committee comprised of prominent leading Bahraini personalities and international experts. 
The fourth edition of the Bahrain Award for Entrepreneurship was launched last September, which began with submitting and receiving applications, followed by the semi-final stage, which included meetings between the participating institutions and the awards technical committee, and followed by the final stage of the evaluation. The Bahrain Award for Entrepreneurship is considered the first Bahraini award in its field, and since its inception in 2015, it has been keen to celebrate the success of Bahraini entrepreneurs and highlight their achievements locally and regionally to develop the national economy and achieve the Bahraini Economic Vision 2030. And now to speak more on the topic, we are joined now by one of the winners, Rashid Al Arifi. Hello, Rashid. Can you tell us more about the award and your participation in it? Yes, well, first off, um, it was an absolute honor and a sincere privilege to have been uh, chosen uh, and to win the uh, startup of the year at the Bahrain Entrepreneurship Award. Uh, it was very competitive this year. We've seen a lot of new talents uh, shaping, and I see the uh, Bahraini ecosystem, financial ecosystem, uh, growing rapidly, hopefully with new talents. And uh, Rashid, what does it mean for you to win the award and how do you feel about it? Well, uh, we see this award adding value to our practice for two reasons. Uh, first, we see it as an opportunity to be recognized in a platform such as the Bahrain Entrepreneurship Award. Mm -hmm. And we also see it as a catalyst uh, to drive our ambition. So we see it as uh, a driving force to make us uh, work uh, rapidly and to present more and to give more to Bahrain. Mm -hmm. That is uh, correct indeed. Winner Rashid Arifi, thank you very much for joining us. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa received Ralph Akaba, the Vice President of Raytheon Company at Glebia Palace. His Royal Highness highlighted that the continual support extended by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, the Supreme Commander to the BDF, ensures its successful combat readiness and advanced military capabilities. He noted that the domestic deployment of advanced military technologies ensures the continued expansion of the BDF's capabilities and helps to safeguard regional and global security. His Royal Highness underlined that the long-standing relations between Bahrain and the United States demonstrate both nations' mutual commitment to global stability. The meeting was also attended by the Minister of Finance and National Economy, Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, BDF's Chief of Staff, Lieutenant General Diab bin Sagra Naimi, and a number of senior officials. His Royal Highness Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa delegated his advisor, His Highness Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, to attend the ceremony hosted by the Ambassador of the UAE to Bahrain, Sheikh Sultan bin Hamdan bin Zayed Al Nahyan, on the occasion of the 48th UAE National Day and the presence of a number of senior personalities and diplomatic corps members accredited to the kingdom. During the ceremony, Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa conveyed the greetings and congratulations of His Royal Highness Prime Minister to the UAE leader leadership on the occasion and his wishes of further progress and prosperity to the UAE. His Highness affirmed the deep-rooted and historic relations between Bahrain and the UAE, noting that relations between the two countries constitute a model of interdependence. His Highness congratulated the people of the UAE for the leading development achievements they made regionally and internationally, which reflect the ambitious visions of the leadership. His Highness expressed the Kingdom's appreciation for the UAE's supporting stances in various circumstances which embody the deep-rooted fraternal ties. For his part, the UAE ambassador to Bahrain expressed thanks and appreciation to His Royal Highness the Prime Minister for his support to broadly relations between the two countries, wishing Bahrain and its people for their progress and prosperity.
His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa deputized His Advisor His Highness Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa to inaugurate the 26th World Islamic Banking Conference held under the theme Mega Trends in Banking and Finance. His Highness Sheikh Salman conveyed the greetings and appreciation of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister to the organizers of the conference and its participants as well as his wishes of success to achieve its goals in discussing various affairs related to the field of Islamic banking and finance. His Highness affirmed that the successful government policy in banking, whose foundations and were laid by His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, made the kingdom a destination for Islamic banks and noted that the Bahraini experience in this field has become a pioneering model in which many countries of the world follow, adding that due to this policy, Bahrain hosts the largest Islamic banks. His Highness also affirmed that His Royal Highness the Prime Minister has realized early on the importance of Islamic banks banks in the economic system, which has been the direction of the region's countries recently, making Bahrain leading in this regard. Sheikh Salman has stressed that Islamic banks are open to develop their products, investment tools and enhance their role and contribution to economic development in the region. As a continuation of the valuable initiative of Islamic banks in Bahrain, which aim to employ graduates, His Highness hailed the role of banks and highlighted the keenness to accommodate graduates and support them to embody the leading role in sustainable development and in light of the economic vision of 2030. His Highness Sheikh Salman also noted that the Islamic banking sector in Bahrain is witnessing continuous development with the support of the government headed by His Royal Highness the Prime Minister as one of the important pillars of financial and banking development, wishing the participants further success. The Speaker of the Representatives Council chaired today the weekly meeting where the Speaker congratulated His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa on the occasion of Bahraini Women's Day and praised the role of Her Royal Highness, wife of His Majesty the King and President of the Supreme Council for Women, Princess Habika bin Ibrahim Al Khalifa, in enhancing women's achievements in the kingdom. The Council then approved a draft law on regulating the labor market in addition to approving a report regarding the response to His Majesty's royal speech. The Council also approved of the expansion of Jet House Industrial School. 
The Minister of Justice and Islamic Affairs attended the opening of the Center for Familial Reconciliation at the Sitra Social Center and the Muharrab Social Center in Psaitin as branches of the main Center for Familial Reconciliation. The event was also attended by the Secretary General of the Supreme Council for Women, the SCW, Halal Ansari, along with a number of officials from the Ministry of Justice and the Ministry of Labor and Social Development and the SCW. The Minister of Justice said that these two branches will help to diversify the methods for resolving conflicts such as mediation and familial reconciliation as steps that would precede taking conflicts to the court. The minister said that this represents a first step to reach all of families in the center's respective areas. The Minister of Justice expressed thanks and appreciation for the work of the Ministry of Labor and Social Development for allowing social centers to establish branches for familial reconciliation as per a recommendation from the SCW under Her Royal Highness is the wife of His Majesty the King, President of the Supreme Council for Women, Princess Abika bin Ibrahim Al Khalifa. The Minister of Justice affirmed the importance of conflict resolution and its positive effects on a wider society. The Secretary General of the SCW said that these steps represent the fruits of the cooperation between the SCW and the two ministries, which the aim of resolving familial conflict. Al Ansari added that these steps represent an implementation of a part of the national plan to support Bahraini women in 2019 to 22. She emphasized the importance of adding more centers and to implement an employment system that would allow for the running of the centers on weekends and official holidays while training the staff and equipping them with the best possible tools for them to carry out their jobs effectively. We're here today uh, with the uh, Ministry of uh, Justice uh, to uh, witness the inauguration of uh, two uh, branches um, uh, established um, uh, f uh, in order to expand the services uh, offered by the Ministry for Family Reconciliation uh, Services. Um, initially, the service was offered um, in the family court's uh, premises uh, in Rafah, and it was inaugurated in its new and advanced uh, approach um, two years ago. Today, uh, the Ministry of Justice, in cooperation with the Supreme Council for Women and the Ministry of Labor, have now expanded the service to now uh, be hosted within two social centers in Bahrain, uh, one of which is in Sitra and the other uh, here in uh, Muharraq. And uh, this uh, initiative actually comes in direct response to uh, the framework that was established and um, announced by the Supreme Council for Women about 10 days ago. Um, um, that uh, focuses on improving family services and family awareness uh, programs here in the country. Yeah. Today we are, we are here to, to have uh, two branches of the main office uh, and the family mediation or family reconciliation office. The main office is uh, stationed in Rafah and the main building of the family courts. And then we are having two branches, one of them in the, in the Muharraq governorate and the other one in Sitra. Uh, we are basically uh, having the services in, in two small branches, and uh, if we went to ask, if we had a successful uh, projects, uh, we will, it will be implemented all, all over Bahrain. Uh, the main objective of having two offices is uh, to to have easy access to the services provided to the fa Bahraini families and family reconciliation services and all the other aspects of the family services as well. The International Court of Justice held the first hearing session to discuss the arguments presented by representatives from Bahrain, Egypt and the United Arab Emirates in the cases concerning the appeal relating to the jurisdiction of the International Civil Aviation Organization, the ICAO Council. The ICG hearings on the two appeals began with a speech delivered by the Ambassador of Bahrain to the United Kingdom and its agent to the ICG, Sheikh Fawaz bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, in which he reiterated that the decision of the ICAO Council did not concern the substance of the dispute as the real dispute arises directly from the sustained regional efforts to restrain Qatar's support for terrorism and other forms of extremism, particularly through the Riyadh Agreement and Qatar's non-compliance with foundational objectives of the Gulf Cooperation Council and international obligations, all of which compelled Bahrain and the Quartet states to take the measures they did on the 5th of June 2017 
to preserve their national security. The ambassador also stressed in his speech that these necessary measures, which included breaking off diplomatic relations with Qatar and imposing the airspace restrictions were implemented with the hope that Qatar would then bring its conduct into compliance with its obligations. The ambassador further added that these procedures reflected Bahrain's vital concerns about the safety and security of Bahrain and other states in the region. The ambassador affirmed Bahrain's commitment to international law and to the peaceful resolution of international disputes, stressing that the kingdom has full confidence in the ICG, which it has already restored to its to the past and will not be reluctant to file appeals before the court again in this case. The hearings which started today in the Netherlands will last until the 6th of December with two rounds of oral pleadings in a case of two appeals from the decisions of the ICAO Council under two international treaties concerning the airspace restrictions imposed by the Quartet in June 2017 in which the Quartet states are the appellants concerned the issue of jurisdiction. The the question is whether Qatar may bring it to technical organization concerned with civil aviation, the International Civil Aviation Organization or ICAO, a dispute that concerns vital matters of national security and stability relating to Qatar's non-compliance with its international obligations under the real agreements and other international obligations. With full respect for the ICAO and the ICAO Council and their continuing commitment to ensuring the safety of air navigation within the framework of ICAO, the four states expressed their disagreement on the decisions of the ICAO Council in June 2018 and have asked the ICG to set them aside. The final decision on these matters will be made by the ICG. Pending the ICG's decision, the ICAO proceedings are suspended while the ICG is hearing the appeals. Mr. President, members of the court, it was, it was with dismay that we imposed these measures that we did on the 5th of June, 2017. But these measures reflected our vital concerns about the safety and security of the Kingdom of Bahrain and other states in the region, such as Egypt. If Qatar continues, continued undermining regional stability through its support of terrorist groups. Bahrain announced these measures as an official statement on the 5th of June, 2017 explaining that they had taken because Qatar continued to destabilize the security and stability of the Kingdom of Bahrain and was referring as was as so and was interfering in its affairs. Qatar was, a, was in flagrant violation of all agreements and principles of international law without regard to its commitment to the constants of Gulf states. This is a clear reference to the Riyadh agreements. Bahrain explained that the decision to break up diplomatic relations with the state of Qatar and to close its airspace 24 hours later were necessary to preserve its national security. Finally, Bahrain indicated that these dangerous Qatari practices embody a very dangerous pattern that cannot be met with silence or accepted, but which must be vigorously and resolutely addressed. This was Bahrain's official position at the time and remains so today. Bahrain rejects Qatar's allegation that we invented this position, this position, just for this case. As we said at the time, Bahrain adopted the measure it did on the 5th of June 2017 because of Qatar's long-standing non-compliance with, with its commitments. This dispute long predates the present proceedings. Qatar's response has been to bring legal cases before the ICAO, Council, and other specialized agencies in an attempt to distract from its own misconduct. But Qatar invoked the ICAO Council's jurisdiction without first making any genuine attempt to negotiate the specific disagreements it alleges, it alleges concerning the Chicago Convention or the Air Transit Agreement. Mr. President, members of the court, this concludes the statement of Bahrain. I invite you to call to the podium the distinguished agent 
on behalf of Egypt. Thank you for your kind attention. And the chairman of Babco, Dr. Dawood Nasif, opened an advanced training simulation model at the Center of Excellence in the Oil and Gas Academy. The event was attended by a number of dignitaries and senior officials in the oil and gas sector in the Kingdom of Bahrain, along with international delegations that were also invited. During the ceremony, Dr. Dawood Nasif delivered a brief speech in which he underlined Babco's ongoing commitment to modernizing its processes and adopting the latest technologies in the world. Managing Director and Vice President of Technology at CLG, Jail Mukherjee, also delivered a brief speech in which he praised Babco's commitment to developing its processes in accordance with the latest technologies in the world. Following the speeches, the new facility was opened and a live demonstration on the training simulation model was presented.